Okay, in this video we're going to do a little introduction to eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And all I'm going to do in this video is just give some definitions, a little notation, do one very short example, and that'll be it. And the next video will actually look at how we go about finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, so definition here. Let A be an n by n matrix, and we say that a scalar lambda is called an eigenvalue of A if there's a non-zero vector x, so that when we take our matrix A and multiply it by x, we get the exact same thing as if we take our scalar lambda and multiply it by x. Such a vector x is called an eigenvector of A corresponding to lambda. Okay, so you'll have different eigenvectors that go with different eigenvalues. And again, eigenvalues and eigenvectors are super, super, super useful, super important, have tons and tons of applications, and we'll talk about some of those uh, down the road as well. So here's going to be our quick little example here. Again, nothing crazy. We're going to show that our vector x that has entries 2 and 1, we're going to show that that's an eigenvector of the matrix A that has entries 3, 2, 3, and negative 2, corresponding to the value of lambda equals 4. Okay, I'm not saying that uh, this matrix A actually has other eigenvalues. We'll talk about that as well. This matrix also has other eigenvectors, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, so really all we have to do is we want to show is the equation A times X does that equal lambda times x? So not a lot to do here other than just a bit of arithmetic. So our matrix A has entries 3, 2, 3, and negative 2. Again, our vector x has entries 2 and 1. And I'm asking myself, well, if, is that going to be equal um, to the right side when we take lambda, which is 4, and again multiply that by x? Well, all we have to do is just a bit of arithmetic. So on the left side, we'll do our matrix multiplication. 3 multiplied by 2 plus 2 multiplied by 1. That'll be our first row. And then our second row, we'll have 3 multiplied by 2 plus, uh, then we'll take negative 2 multiplied by 1. Well, on the right side, we just multiply uh, our entries 2 and 1 by 4. Well, 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 1 is 4. Well, on the left side, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 times 1 will give us 8. 3 times 2 is 6, uh, we'll have plus negative 2, so 6 minus 2 will give us 4. Hey, that certainly does give us equality. So yes, in fact, we would say that the vector with entries 2 and 1 is an eigenvector of the matrix A, corresponding to the eigenvalue of 4. Okay, so one other little remark here. If lambda is an eigenvalue of A, so we had 4 was an eigenvalue of our matrix A, and x is an eigenvector belonging to lambda, so again our eigenvector was the, was the vector with entries 2 and 1 that corresponded to the um, eigenvalue of 4, it says any non-zero multiple of x will be an eigenvector as well. Okay, so it turns out that since 2 and 1 was an eigenvector, we can take any non-zero multiple. So 4 and 2, 20 and 10, 200 and 100, all of those values would have also been eigenvectors that correspond to the eigenvalue of 4. And again, we can show this quickly. We're already assuming that a times x equals lambda times x. Okay. Well, to show it in this case, if we take our, our eigenvector x and multiply it by some constant alpha, well, we can always simply rewrite this. Since alpha is a scalar, we can pull that out front and have alpha times a times x. But again, by assumption, a times x that equals lambda times x. And again, since alpha is just a scalar, we can put that back inside 
and we'll have that lambda equals alpha times x. And now, again, we've got our desired result. So, all right, again, nothing, nothing too heavy in this example, in this video. In the next one, again, we'll start actually looking at finding uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors in general, because that's probably more to the point and something that you'll certainly see, certainly be asked to do in a linear algebra class.